Hey guys, Ron here from HVAC Training Solutions. I keep getting questions on the uh, refrigeration cycle from the live training that we had a couple weeks ago. And I have a great one from Goru. And the question is, how can the temperature, and he's asking about the temperature in the condenser, drop from 125 degrees Fahrenheit to 105 degrees, but the pressure remains the same? Is there a mistake in the figure? Also, is the pressure the same all across the condenser from right after the compressor to right before the metering device. So before we go on to the diagram there, we have to understand what saturation is when we're talking about a refrigeration system. And there are two places where the refrigerant is at its saturation point. That is in the evaporator and then on the low side and on in the condenser on the high side. And saturation, when it, we're refer, referring to refrigerant, is when both liquid and vapor refrigerant are present. And that's the point where if we add heat, it changes from liquid to vapor. And if we remove heat, it changes back from vapor to liquid. And re it releases all of that latent heat. So you need to remember saturation temperature and what is happening at, that, at these points. So this is our diagram that we were using in the in the video on the refrigeration cycle and I'm gonna cut this part of the part of the refrigeration cycle out because he he was asking a question about the um, condensing side and this is our out, outdoor condenser right here alright so here is the half of the diagram that we're gonna talk about so the question was how does it get the why is the refrigerant at 125 degrees Fahrenheit here 105 degrees Fahrenheit here and the pressure is still the same and the question also would be how does it start out at 200 degrees Fahrenheit at this point in the system go down to 125 degrees Fahrenheit and then even decrease further to 105 degrees Fahrenheit while the pressure all stays the same so look at this we have 278 PSIG from this part of the compressor to the metering device. So when we go to our pressure temperature chart, we're at 278 PSIG on R22. So let's find 278. Right there, there's our R22 line coming down to 278. And it's 125 degrees Fahrenheit. But we have 200 degrees Fahrenheit here, 125 degrees Fahrenheit here, and 105 degrees Fahrenheit here, but the pressure on all these points are the same. So that is what the question is, is why with on the refrigeration chart and the PT chart, does it say it should be 125, but then we have 200 here and 105 degrees Fahrenheit at the metering device. Now is when you have to remember what this what saturation means and that means when the refrigerant is in both its liquid and vapor state and if you add heat changes from liquid to vapor if you re remove heat it changes from vapor back to liquid. So in the refrigeration cycle uh, in the condensing side coming out of the compressor we have a hundred percent vapor coming out. So we're not saturated at this point. It is superheated vapor only. And the pressure temperature chart only refers to refrigerant at the saturation point. So right here, it's not at the saturation point. It is 100% vapor, and it is being desuperheated. At a certain point within the condenser, we have now taken all of the superheat out, and we have reached the point where if we remove any more heat, it changes from vapor to liquid. We are now saturated at the saturation point and we are removing heat. So the pressure temperature chart only refers to this point onwards in the condensing unit. And when I say we're removing heat, we're removing latent heat and that is the heat that changes the state of refrigerant. So we do superheat up to this point. Now we are at we are now on the PT chart. And 
This is when at 278 PSIG, we're at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And from here, we're going from liquid to vapor, liquid to vapor, liquid to vapor, all the way through the condenser. Theoretically, halfway through the condenser, we are 50% liquid, 50% vapor. As we move down to the through the condenser, we get to the point where we have removed all of the latent heat and we are 100% liquid. And then the PT chart stops right here because now we're 100% liquid. And remember, the PT chart talks about saturation. And that is when we're at both vapor and liquid at the same time. So we've removed the heat, latent heat, from here, this point to this point in the condenser. And this is what the PT chart refers to. And at the, throughout this condenser, this temperature remains 125 degrees Fahrenheit as long as we are changing state from vapor to liquid. Then when we hit this point, we begin to subcool. And this is where our sensible heat, our measurable heat, comes in. And we further cool this liquid refrigerant down from 125 degrees to 120 5 degrees Fahrenheit so we have a solid column of subcooled liquid when we hit the metering device. Quick recap here. So from this point in the compressor to this point in the condenser we are desuperheating. We are not on the pressure temperature chart and we are dropping from 200 degrees Fahrenheit on our way down to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Once we hit 125 degrees Fahrenheit we are now changing the state of the refrigerant, that is when we end up on the PT chart. Right here. This is where we're at and this is what we're talking about when we're talking about saturation point. So we desuperheat up to this point, then we change state from vapor to liquid through the condenser to this point until it's 100% liquid and then we're on the subcooling part of the refrigeration cycle. And remember the PT chart only refers to the change of state part of the refrigeration cycle which is from just the beginning of the condenser here after the desuperheating happens until the, just about the end of the condenser where the subcooling begins to start. So this is what their PT chart refers to. I hope that answers your questions. If not, uh, review this video and the other one and submit them on YouTube and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you.